After an extended hiatus, we're back with another film breakdown. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is just sort of the premise of this video. I got a text from uh, Andrew Romeo, who owns our gym, with a sort of reference of something he had seen, and he was like, hey, would it be possible for us to do something like this? Um, I said, sure. Honestly, I didn't think the reference looked great, so I was like, this seems easy enough. And we started talking a little bit about what he was trying to accomplish and then figured out scheduling. So concept-wise, the goal was simple. We wanted to talk about Nina's personal journey, a little bit about how personal training and the Romeo Athletics community had fit into that, but to really focus on her. The reference video that he sent had sort of the coach doing an interview and talking a little bit about what they'd seen. I didn't really feel like that was necessary, so we decided to forego that and just focus on Nina's story and try and tell a story that was really about, hey, here's how you set a goal, here's accomplishing a goal, here's the pieces that have played into that. The logistics of this project were pretty simple, but they were a little limiting, which is that we were trying to work around Nina's schedule, uh, Rome's schedule, my schedule, trying to do something that wasn't gonna be super involved, um, and we were trying to do it, obviously, without spending a bunch of money. So I was trying to do it with gear that I had on hand, um, didn't really wanna hire a bunch of crew. I was just doing it as a favor for the gym, and so we didn't have like a big budget for this sort of thing. You don't always need a huge crew um, to make stuff that looks good. And you know, if we had a bigger team, if we had more gear, there's definitely some things that I would have changed, but it's sort of finding that balance within that. We also didn't have a ton of time. Nina has a busy work schedule, Rome is training people. And so the goal was to sort of get this done in less than a two hour block total. Um, and I think it ended up taking us right around 90 minutes. So gear wise, I knew that I had to keep it simple. Realistically, I knew that I was gonna end up using the Easy Rig. Uh, Vario 5 that I own to shoot most of the b-roll for this um, and initially I was torn on whether to do the interview handheld or um, on sticks and made the decision that we were going to try to go handheld and that's just a little thing that I like doing in these sorts of pieces that helps them feel a little less corporate a little less staged shot it all in the Ursa Mini G2 um, was happy enough with the image shot Blackmagic RAW for the first time. Um, and I forget exactly what the setting is for that. It's like 3.6K anamorphic or something. And I believe we did like the eight to one compression. The lenses we shot on were the Atlas anamorphics. And so when I was originally talking about this job, I was in the middle of shooting a political commercial and we had rented the Atlas for the political commercial. Um, and so I basically called my friend Mike who owns the Atlas and I said, hey, I have this little shoot for our gym. I'd love to test shooting the Atlas a little wider open than I'm normally comfortable with, and this is a good shoot for that. Mike said it was cool that we used the Atlas, and we ended up shooting the whole thing on the 40 millimeter, which I wasn't really expecting. Usually I skew towards that 65, but wanted to try something a little wider, and then just the pace we were moving at uh, didn't really end up going back to any longer lenses. Something a couple of people asked about on Instagram was filters. I honestly tend to use what I have. I would love to try more stuff out and sometimes when we're doing bigger jobs and are getting stuff from rental houses, I will ask for filters that I haven't used before just for the sake of trying them out. Um, but I sort of have a small package of filters that I own and it's just what I like. There's really no uh, rhyme or reason to it. There's other stuff that I would love to try more of and sometimes that I like the look of. But for this shoot, initially when I built the camera, the plan was to use a black true net that I have as well as a format super mist. And that stack was something we used on a music video last year. Um, the Lado Beauty video, which was shot on Vista Primes. It was actually shot all on the 18 millimeter Vista Prime. And really just wanted to add some funkiness to all of that. And I felt like that was a good look. Put both filters in the Atlas and just felt like it was too much. In hindsight, I maybe could have got away with it, but on the day I was feeling a little not sure about it and sort of a bead them and decided that I liked what the Super Mist by itself was doing better than the True Net by itself. Christopher asked about filtration and haze. We did not use any haze. I would have liked to, but it would have been really impractical in a room this size with massive open bay doors. So we did use the Super Mist filter as I mentioned, but nothing else was going on in the room at the time. So one question I got from Andrew Taylor was, love the handheld look, 
Was this something you sort of did on purpose or as a result of time and crew? Um, answer's a little bit of both. I mean, I like shooting handheld. I've done a lot of it. Um, a lot of the reason I've done a lot of it is because of the time and budget reasons that it works out. So, you know, I would say in a world where I had a gimbal and different lenses sitting around, like I maybe would have been open to that. I don't think it had to be handheld, but I think it fit the vibe of the piece and it was just the most practical thing to do. Another question a few people asked was about the audio setup. I should actually check what this is called. Uh, I have a Rode NTG3, which is what you're listening to right now. It's on a K-Tech uh, carbon fiber boom pole, which is on a stand. And uh, for this shoot, I ran it right into a Zoom H6. What you're listening to right now is the same setup run directly into the camera. And I honestly run it into camera a lot and find that it sounds great. The only reason I ran it into the H6 on the day was since we were doing handheld, I didn't wanna worry about being tethered to a stand and accidentally pulling on it or anything. So I just ran that into the H6, quickly checked the level um, before we started rolling and then just let it roll through the end of the interview. And then there's no significant audio otherwise in the piece that I can think of. Okay, so that pretty much gets us to the day of the shoot. I showed up to the gym a little bit early, planning on setting up our interview and just getting everything organized. I ended up picking a spot in the corner of the gym that still had some depth to it that made sense that there was sort of gonna be this motivated light coming from open bay doors and that we had enough space for me to sort of move around. I ended up coming over, putting a bench out for them to sit on, popped up the Hudson Spider, which was from my buddy Quentin Brogan, and um, pretty much just used that as a key. I find that the Hudson Spider into a silver umbrella looks super natural. It it's got this interesting quality to it that just feels a little different than some other lights and it's the light that I feel best about when I only have one light for these sorts of things. So put the spider on, um, dialed the level in on myself a little bit and then just sort of threw the stand up, got our framing in line, felt through you know what are the wide to close angles of this going to feel like as we float around a little bit handheld. And then I did something which I've done a lot in the past, a little trick of mine. When I'm doing a handheld interview, or sometimes if I'm doing a locked off interview or rather a tripod interview where we're floating around a little bit, I will be operating and don't have someone else who can operate. So what I will do is have someone sit in as sort of the interviewee, but I will still ask the question. Okay, I have like two more questions. And so we had Andrew who owns the gym and is Nina's coach. He sat in as sort of the interviewer but I was operating the camera with the easy rig and asking the questions, but it gives them an eye line. It gives Nina someone to talk to. And so it just makes it easier that they don't have to sort of stare off into space. It still feels natural. And some people are gonna struggle with it, but Nina did really well. And so it worked out for us. That brings us to another question that I got asked was, is this scripted or is she talking as normal? And she's talking as normal. I asked her some questions, um, gave her a few prompts and said, hey, can you talk a little bit about this? What were the, some of the things that you had experienced or tried in the past that hadn't worked for you? <laughs> She was honestly really well-spoken and made it easy. There are some things that if she was less well-spoken, I would probably do to coach her through that, um, just making sure that she's speaking in full sentences and whatnot, but Nina was a natural, so we didn't have to do too much work outside of just making sure that we were phrasing questions in a way that we would get good answers. But when I'm going through something like that, what I'm really thinking of on the day is what's the beginning, what's the middle, what's the end? And once you've heard a good beginning, you've heard a good middle, and you've heard a good end, you should be good. I try not to get too fancy with slicing stuff around and really breaking stuff up, so they're pretty coherent sound bites that you end up hearing, but they definitely are the kind of thing that on the day, we're saying, okay, we wanna start with this wedding story, and then we're going to you know, talk about what your transformation was, we're going to talk about how working with Rome has helped, and we talked some more about some specific things on that side as far as coaching and um, training styles and whatever else and accountability. But it, you know, really just getting the pieces we would need to put this story together and then making sure that we had a good closing piece. And that's something that I think a lot of times gets missed here is that there isn't really a strong ending. And so as we were getting to the interview, you know, I sort of gave her a prompt that was something along the lines of like, what do you see in the future for yourself? And that was where we got the closing line of the piece and that sort of ties it all together. 
B-roll wasn't really something that we had super planned. I had a sense of sort of what maybe we could do, but I always like to do interviews first and then sort of inform the B-roll off of that. Um, and honestly, the B-roll wasn't super informed by the story. It was more just what are some different things that we can show that will fit this journey. So the first thing we did was the bike scene. We had her sort of roll out a bike um, and her and Andrew talking to each other. And that was something that I wanted to make sure that I got was them interacting, got some close-ups of him, some inserts of the bike, and just had a little scene there. Wide, medium, tights, cover the thing, um, and just sort of shoot it down. For lighting in the gym, we mostly used the natural light and shut off some of the overheads, but we did walk around that Hudson Spider to use as our key. It did get warmed up a little bit at one point, um, but for the most part, we were just sort of walking that around, playing with the level a little bit, and using it to wrap some of what was going on and just add a little extra shape to Nina. Again, if we had a little more time, I would have loved to light some of the inserts on Rome a little better, but we're just going, ripping through this thing, and so you sort of focus on whatever is gonna be the highest priority. Main thoughts with the B-roll were get some variety, get a assortment of activities. So we wanted to show cardiovascular, something that was strength-based. Um, we wanted to show coach interaction and just sort of these things of training cues, which is part of that scene where he's walking her through how to do what's called a dead bug. Um, and just wanted to say, okay, we want to show that there is specific coach movement feedback being given. We want to show that there is conversation happening between the two of you. And so that was really the way that I thought through that. And so we set up these couple little circuits, the bike, um, the circuit where she was doing the Bulgarian split squats as well as deadlifts. And then there was a little thing with the kettlebells and the dead bugs. Um, and then we had her go outside and run a little bit. And so it was all pretty simple. You know, we only did this for another 30, 40 minutes and there wasn't a whole lot of crazy lighting going on, but it's sort of picking a good spot to put them in within the gym. Um, and being willing to lean into this look that sort of naturally exists, float the Hudson around to just get some extra light where you need it, and you know, this is what you end up with. So after we had done these three little B-roll scenes, we picked up three more, and those were Nina going outside and just briefly running. Part of the interview questions we talked to her about were her history of running with her family and running with her dad and their plan to run a half marathon at Disney. It didn't make the final cut, but it was something that we talked about, and so I knew I wanted a few shots of that. And so that was really quick. It was just me popping out, getting sort of this shot of her running through frame, and then I actually hopped in the bed of Rome's truck, and we got these two other shots of her jogging and me just filming handheld off the bed of the truck. After we did that, we had her pull her car in and got that sort of opening sequence of her pulling her car in and going into the gym. And then the, that was our opening. The last thing I knew we needed was a good closing. And so we decided to work in jump rope. And then I had them go right in front of the door and said, hey, just do like 10 of them. And then at the end, I want you to really signal that you're done and give each other a big high five. And so again, it's sort of like the interview thing where we go, Let's get a good closing soundbite where you talk about the future and what you see yourself doing at this gym. Let's get a good closing clip, a good closing shot. And that shot of Rome just sort of doing the we're all done and then the big high five was awesome. And so that was something too where since I knew that was most likely gonna be the ending, I just sort of did that um, tilt up to the ceiling, let it go out of focus and that was the end of our video. I think the biggest takeaway from this is probably one, you know, leaning into your aesthetic, lean into what you can control, be picky about the spots, be picky about the lights that you're turning on and off, be picky about what you bring, and just try to control what you can, but don't get caught up in what you can't. And then from a story perspective, try to find the human element. And I think that for her story, it was pretty clear that this wedding dress story was emotional, leaning into that story, committing to that story, getting a good opening soundbite, getting a good closing soundbite. I could always play with the middle and sort of stretch that out or cut it down and then visually too making sure that we got those opening things and it's a little cliche to get the car pulling up and her walking into the gym but it plays and when you have to shoot something in 90 minutes sometimes you got to lean into cliches anyway that's it hopefully that was helpful i feel like i just talked a lot but that's what it is getting back into the grind so if you found this helpful like and subscribe and if you want to see more videos like this let me know what you'd like to see more of i have a list of ideas but i'm always noting things that people suggest in the comments so if you want to see more breakdowns if you want to see technique things how to's whatever that is trying to be back on here a little bit so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time Peter,